Today we're going to talk about sugar. I do not think people are aware of how much sugar they're putting in their bodies and their family's bodies. Take a look at right up here. We have peanut marshmallows. Remember those things as a child? 280 grams of sugar. Both of these combined right here. Couldn't even fit them into one cup. And then we get apple juice. Apple juice has 264 grams of sugar. I mean, how many kids at parties, at the school, they're drinking the apple juice thinking it's better than soda, when in fact, it seems to be, ha it has more sugar. Both of these combined right here. And then we got Coke, 136 grams of sugar. That Arizona, 120 grams. Right here, you can get this at the dollar store for a buck, um, which a lot of this contains uh, high fructose corn syrup, all right? Now, high fructose corn syrup is a lot cheaper than actual sugar. That's why they're using it now. It's like 20 cents a pound. Um, an average person consumes about 63 pounds of high fructose corn syrup every single year. Frosted, or no, it's uh, Fruit Loops. I, I'd like to know how much fruit is in Fruit Loops. I don't think any, but they have fiber and whole grains. So this Fruit Loops has 96 grams of sugar. Now, the th other thing you need to make a note on is that some of these refined grains like flour products might not have a lot of sugar, but they have a lot of grains, which isn't listed in the sugar content. So when you evaluate the food at the grocery store when you buy it, always look at the sugar amounts, okay? A little sugar on the nutrient facts. It'll have sugar grams. That's the most important thing to look at, and you want that as close to zero as possible. And then you want to realize that serving size per cup, and then it says how many servings uh, per container. So you have to multiply eight serving per container times the number of sugars to get the true amount. So if you're just looking at the sugars, it's not 12 grams for the whole box. It's 12 times 8, which is 96 grams. Okay, then we have Nutri-Grain. <laughs> Nutri-Grain um, blueberry, right? It says made with real fruit. But, but realize that there's so much sugar in here, 96 grams. There's a little bit of blueberry flavoring and puree. That's pretty much about it. Then we have orange drink. That's 91 grams of sugar. You can get this for a buck at the dollar store. And it has um, a lot of high fructose corn syrup. And then we have chocolate fudge soda, 80 grams. And then check this out, Similac. This is baby formula. And uh, what's interesting is I try to find the sugar grams. You can't find it. I don't know why, but if you look on the label, it'll have total carbohydrates, but it won't have total sugar. So I'm just taking the total carbohydrates, assuming that's sugar, simply because it's made the first ingredient is corn syrup and then soy protein isolates. So anytime it's the first ingredient, it's the most uh, material in the product. Okay, so we have baby formula and then we have um, Gatorade. 58 grams of sugar. Dextrose, they use dextrose and sucrose. Those sugars tend to deplete electrolytes. So sugar, one of the effects is it depletes potassium, it depletes calcium, and it depletes B vitamins. When you deplete your potassium, your relative sodium goes up, so you retain sodium, and that's why you can gain a pound of weight after eating just a little bit of sugar because of the fluid retention. Then we get vitamin water, 31 grams. I mean, an average um, Coca-Cola, eight ounce uh, glass, uh, can of Coca-Cola has 38 grams. This has 31, not much less. And again, these, this, they should call it synthetic vitamin water because it's all synthetic vitamins. Check this out, hidden sugar in flavored yogurt, 26 grams of sugar. That's really only 10 grams, well, 12 grams less than a Coke. There's a lot of sugar in this thing right here. And then Activia, 25 grams of sugar. And then we have Ensure. We have 23 grams of sugar with a lot of synthetic vitamins. So when you take sugar cane itself, you have tremendous amounts of nutrition, which will never produce tooth decay because of all the the vitamins and minerals in, in the uh, sugar cane. So when they separate it out into white sugar, the other part of sugar is molasses, okay? And then they have different varying degrees of, 
of how much of molasses versus white sugar. You have brown sugar, you have raw sugar, and then you have really dark molasses. But molasses is still high in sugar as well, but it ha at least it has nutrition. So it's not going to form any negative effects with uh, tooth decay, too. When, when you bake with molasses, you're more satisfied because of the fact that it has more nutrition. It's hard to eat a lot of it. It's easier to eat a lot of refined sugar because there's no nutrients to turn off the brain's hunger. Okay. So when you eat foods high in sugar, you tend to want to eat more and more and more of it because there's no nutrition. So it, de it depletes various things. So um, the other thing I want to mention, the effect of sugar is uh, this thing called insulin. Insulin regulates sugar by uh, getting the sugar out of the blood fast. When you take this much sugar in, in one sitting, for example, you're going to have massive whiplash of certain organs like your pancreas that flood that insulin and and spike it to drop the sugar and what it's doing is taking the sugar and putting it in storage as fat triglycerides cholesterol okay that's what it's doing so when the blood sugar goes up and your insulin goes up to counter it um, you start to create fatigue within the whole system and over time it loses control and then you end up with uh, low blood sugar. That's the first step. That's like a pre-diabetic. It's called hypoglycemia. Lo hypo meaning low blood sugar. Glycemic means sugar. So we have the situation where we have low blood sugar. So here are the symptoms. Craving sweets. Okay, that's a pre-diabetic state. Craving sweets all the time. Then we have irritability, uh, anxiety, depression, ADD, hyperactivity. Those are all signs of pre-diabetes because it's hypoglycemia. And uh, what happens is that over time, you start creating more and more damage with the system. And now, the insulin doesn't work, so now things stay high in the sugar. Hyperglycemia, that's called diabetes. Why? Because you don't have enough insulin to push it down. So the symptoms for high blood sugar would be fatigue, brain fog, much like you would feel after a Thanksgiving meal. So you have this lethargy, this brain fog, this fatigue, all right? And that's diabetes. And that's why they take certain... Um, uh, drugs, metformin, and even insulin to start lowering the blood sugar. The problem with that is that once you're diabetic, um, because the sugars aren't regulated, there's a lot of side effects with vision. You go blind eventually because it affects the nerves in the eye, the optic nerve. It affects the circulation in the outer fingertips and the feet. So you start getting pain in your feet, tingling. It's called peripheral neuropathy. Eventually losing circulation, eventually losing your toes to gangrene. So there's a lot of bad effects, not just weight gain, and in the presence of just a little bit of sugar, because sugar and insulin, I'm sorry, because insulin is a dominating hormone, you can do a lot of good things with your diet, and all it takes is a little bit of that bad thing, especially as you age, to create huge uh, countering effects. So in a little bit of sugar will block a lot of good things that you do. So you can be exercising, eating good, and sleeping, and just a little bit of sugar will bump you out of fat burning for a long time, depending on your metabolism. Now, when you're 18, you can get away with it like myself, because all I ate growing up was sugar, sugar, sugar. I would live on these foods, and that's why I got unhealthy, because I burnt my body out. I lasted till I was 28. I met a patient uh, yesterday, in fact, uh, and she lasted till she was like 48. And she, she's been living on sugar her whole life, and finally it caught up with her, and now she has diabetes and all these other problems. So that's what's motivating her. So I'm not saying you can't have all these things, but all I'm saying is I want you to be aware of what's going to occur and be willing to experience those negative effects. Be more cognitive when you eat this thing versus being slightly asleep when you're eating I and mean, getting into that social mode where you all of a sudden you realize, oh my gosh, what did I just do? So I want you to become more aware of what you do when you consume this and realize it, how much damage it creates. Now, there's a couple things that you can do to get rid of cravings. Number one, you can consume more potassium. I just wrote a book, and you could download this free off my website called The Kale Shake Diet. It's 12 pages, it's a free book, and um, there's nothing in here to buy. You can download it off my website. You can also come to my office and just get one free. But it's very, very simple. You should get your friends and family just to do this one simple thing. Make a kale shake in the morning, and that starts to spike your potassium because potassium is the mineral that will help reduce the cravings to sugar. Why? Because it helps to uh, prevent a low blood sugar situation. So, so it's very important to have a lot of potassium in the diet 
so that, that way you won't want as much sugar. And when you're burning, when you're actually um, craving sugar, you're not burning fat. So just realize that if you're trying to lose weight and you're still craving sugar, then there's, you're not really burning fat. You're just burning up your sugar and then you eat more sugar and it's a, ne a never-ending process. True fat burning, you have no cravings for sugar. That's just an FYI. Now, the, the best sweetener that I, I use, I like xylitol. Don't give it to your dog. It's interesting as a side effect on dogs. But for you, it tastes very um, just like sugar. You can use it in uh, your baking and things like that. I highly recommend something like this. And get, you know, for your kids and things, get some recipes and do it that way. And another point I want to bring up, it's so funny how you have people that say, well, Dr. Berg, I'm doing... I went to Whole Foods and I'm doing organic uh, foods. Um, of course, come to find out, those organic treats are made with agave nectar, coconut syrup, and brown rice syrup. Those are, it's still sugar. It's still going to create a similar effect. So just because it's organic doesn't mean it's okay to consume. Another point is that 33% of children are becoming diabetic. That's crazy. We never had this when I was growing up. There's been this huge spike of more and more and more sugary drinks. It's the sugar. That's the culprit. Um, so basically, in closing, what I want to talk about is I want to show you some interesting ads that you can, you probably saw growing up, you know, when you were younger. Uh, number one, there's this ad that says, uh, the importance of sugar... It says right here, in a timely matter, in families and meals, nutritional findings show that your need for nature's own sweetener is as deep-seated as human bodies need for energy. It's only 18 calories. And here's another one. Why so many Weight Watchers find sugar a spoon full of prevention? What prompts Weight Watchers to take sugar in their beverage in a light dessert now and then? Well, it may look like cheating, but they're really making their diet easier to stick to. That's because sugar helps prevent you from overeating. It satisfies your appetite much faster than other foods. With sugar in your diet, you're happier with smaller portions and everything you try. And that's hilarious because, again, they don't realize that the insulin effect is so dominating and so powerful, the whole calorie counting thing is a joke. How about this one? For a better start in life, try cola early earlier. How soon is soon? Not soon enough. Laboratory tests, I'd love to see these laboratory tests, over the past few years has been proven that babies who start drinking soda during the early formative period have a much higher chance of gaining acceptance and fitting in during those awkward preteens and teen years. So do yourself a favor. Do your child a favor. Start them on a strict regimen, I love that strict, of soda and other sugary carbonated beverages right now for a lifetime of guaranteed happiness. Guaranteed? Or how about this one? Pure pleasure. Give some 7-Up in your, in, to your kids. Uh, it's so wholesome. Mix it with milk. See, this is, this is the problem. The, apparently, marketing works. Um, so here's the thing. Here's what I want you to do. Spread this video to your friends and family. Go through your cupboards. Go through your refrigerator. Start getting the sugar out of your body. It's, it has major effects, not just on your body, but your weight, your vitality, your energy. So I hope this video helped you to increase your awareness. Spread the word, and I'll see you in the next video.